Hi guys, it's another silly Saturday. You know what happens on a Saturday, the missus goes missing for half a day. She's nipped into town and uh, took them to the local market. 20 minutes away, so she'll be about four hours. So um, I've let the smalls out, the big herds sorted. Uh, everyone's had their bottle that needs sorting out. And uh, I just thought while I'm sat here, I'll grab the video and just fill you in on a few things that probably didn't warrant doing a full video on each individual subject. But there's a few thoughts that have been going through my mind few experiences as well I thought it might be nice just to to pass that on to you guys while you're having your brew on a Saturday or it might be a pint as of today the sticky smalls are now back to being called smalls although they are grown well there's no more sticky weeds around they've had most of them and uh, they've dried out the remaining ones anyway also where we have been letting them out over yonder on the other uh, uh, farmers patch it's pretty much a dust bowl so uh, instant asthma attack if we go out there. So they're in here. Uh, numbers have dropped by three as of this morning. We haven't lost them. We've just relocated them. And I mean really relocated them. They've, they've now joined the bigs on the island. So we had two young girls that were, were old enough to meet Mr. Bullseye. And we had Hoover as well. Cutest goat in Thailand. That's official. Um, and over there, there's a little brown dot. That's jackpot. He's been left here, so he's without his mum as of this morning. Uh, he doesn't care. You can tell, obviously, he's, you know, his dad's bullseye, so um, pretty much non-emotional uh, when it comes to the ladies, even if it is his mum. So she's gone over there. There was a little bit of a tete-a-tete out there, a little bit of headbutton, but it seems to have sorted it itself out. Uh, shitty Dave's still shitty. He is growing though, so uh, the time is approaching that he will be moved on. Uh, we certainly won't be keeping him uh, as a breeding buck, that's for sure. Uh, we're still undecided about uh, young Jackpot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if it looks like he's going to be a, a short, squat, fat goat like his mum, then uh, no, we won't be keeping him. Roger there behind uh, Onesie, just going onto the path there. Uh, he will be going soon. Uh, he's roughly about 12 kg at the moment. He hasn't grown quite as quickly as Boston did, <laughs> 21 kg in seven weeks, uh, but he's still filling out nicely. I think the most beautiful goat we've got, I think I've mentioned her before, is Tattoo, but you probably just saw her wobble. There's something going on, I think, with her hips or back legs, and she's not as mobile as the others. She's been like that for a couple of weeks now. She's been getting shots for vitamin and iron to try and build her up. And every time she gets a shot, she eats more. Uh, but she's just not that steady on a pin, certainly in the morning. But she's eating well. Other than her looking a bit, a bit wobbly, she's, she's one of the goats in the best conditions, really. She's, she's got beautiful hair. Um, her gums and her tongue are nice and pink. Her eyes are nice and clear. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed, we're just going to sort itself out. We just started giving, introducing um, sunflower seeds to the goats, just a, a small amount each day, just in case it's a copper deficiency. Uh, the mineral blocks that we get are for sheep and goats, which is normally a no-no, where well, it is regarded as a no-no, but we can't get any loose minerals where we are. We're still trying to track down a source for those. So, if any of you are keeping livestock, and you've managed to source loose minerals instead of one of those lick blocks, then we'll really appreciate sending us a link to that or just tell us the website that you can get them from. We are really struggling with that. I know, well, it's hard to put a percent on, but we've never ever seen another goat farm that does loose minerals, uh, but that's the ideal for them. So until then, uh, we're giving separate things like baking soda, uh, the sunflower seeds, uh, rock salt, and then mineral, mineral blocks They've got activated charcoal and they've got EMPO in their water as well. So uh, we're doing as much as we can with the resources that we've, we've found. But again, guys, if you could let us know. I know a lot of you are into your livestock farming out here. Uh, loose minerals is what we're really, really after. Try and get these in tip-top condition. So that's the, the goats sorted, really. Uh, they're doing a good job clearing up out here. Round the corner... I'm not going to put them on camera guys for too long, I won't give them any close-ups. They said they're alright to go on camera, there's our two fellas that you guys are helping to fun being out here and what they're doing, they're working around Toon's dad's 
JD because it's been really overgrown and quite neglected. So the two guys have cleaned it all out and they're, they're doing some alterations. But I want to do a whole video on these two guys and what they've been doing. So as always, our goats here take up probably 90% of our time and efforts. Uh, but there's there's lots of other stuff been going on as well as the, the two guys doing some building work. And um, some of it's been brilliant and some of it not so much. Firstly, I'd like to give a shout out to, to Jim wearing his hat that he kindly brought over to us earlier in the year. Fortunately, we got an email from his, his daughter um, four or five days ago that he'd uh, passed away. And he was a lovely guy. He came out here this year and spent quite a few days with us. He then went off on a mini tour of Thailand and I think four days later he missed the goat so much that he came back and had another four or five days with us before um, going back off on his, his uh, Honda motorcycle that he'd rented and went back to Bangkok for a few days but even then he said he wished he'd stayed a little bit longer. We got on really well, spent a lot of time with him, most of the time it was just talking bollocks and and looking at the goats and stroking the goats and feeding them but um, a lovely lovely guy and it's really sad because he was going to be coming out here once his visa came through and he'd loaded up his container he was bringing out his Triumph TR6 everything was going to get delivered here and then once he came out here he was going to use our village house as a base and um, just tour Thailand in his Triumph so uh, Awful news, really, really sad news. But um, this hat, I didn't know at the time, is one of the best hats you can get in the world, and um, I'm sure it's going to be with us for a long, long time. His kindness didn't stop just with the hat, though, guys. He helped fund the uh, the posts for our boundary fencing. You know, it's, it's all done now, and um, a big part of that. It's down to Jim, so uh, if you're listening, mate, just can't thank you enough. Moving on from dear Jim, then uh, we had two two kind gentlemen turn up this week, and they only went a couple of days ago. And uh, you'll know one of them, or some of you will know Eddie. He came to us in our hour of need the other year when we had a horrific storm here, and uh, he came down in his tartar and brought a few tools and he went with us up the uh, mountain which is just hidden behind our outside living area there where there's an old temple and that's where we got all the timber to uh, do the flooring on our initial goat house just around there. There's a lot of finger pointing this morning, I do know that. Uh, I haven't got my, my goat naughty stick to hand. Uh, so he turned up. Star, do you mind girl? Not, you're not on this bit today are we? No, don't squeak. Off you go. More meat on the butcher's up, that one. So Eddie turned up with his friend Alan, and although he was Welsh, lovely bloke. Those two fellas, uh, well, I can't say they bled their brakes, because is that clusters working in Thailand? I'm not sure. Uh, gave us um, supervision, and uh, Toon got under the car and fixed the brakes. Of course she didn't. But, um, yeah... Our brakes on our trusty Nissan pickup are about 80% better now. The guys were saying it might be worth getting the pads checked out because it's uh, still not 100%, but it's a lot, lot, it's a lot better now compared to how it used to be. I'm almost going through the front window when I press the brakes, so uh, a lot, lot better. So um, it's not all doom and gloom, is it? It's uh, you get some people that are incredibly helpful, come all the way from Chiang Mai and gave us some help. We'd also booked them into a local resort. <laughs> no, we hadn't. We hadn't. That's a lie. We hadn't booked them in. Now, unfortunately, we had said to them, look, we only got one room, fur bedroom furnished back at the village house. And uh, only one, one bedroom has got air con anyway. So uh, we'll put you in the local resort in town, which is about 10, 15 minutes away. Uh, they're never full, so we hadn't bothered <laughs> reserving them a couple of rooms. Uh, and as we turned up, as Eddie was climbing out of the car, I did say to him, you're going to love this, mate. It's really nice. And it's only 3,000 baht a night. It's nice, it's about 500. Uh, and then we went to check in and they said, no for langs. <laughs> to do with the COVID. And although they could prove uh, that they lived in Thailand and hadn't been out of Thailand for quite a few years, they were still refused um, 
accommodation. So we had to sort that out at the 11th hour. It was all sorted in the end and we went out and we had a lovely meal and it was a good fun. Uh, the following day, to show my appreciation of uh, them, them sorting out our brakes on our Nissan, I then proceeded to thrash them at playing Patong. So uh, it was England against Wales, against USA, against Thailand and the uh, order of merit was England first, closely followed by Alan, the, the Welsh Dragon, uh, closely followed by Eddie uh, and then Thailand was last but it was incredibly tight. Uh, Toon said Eddie came last because he was speaking quite naughty so uh, and he was always stepping over the uh, the mark where you're supposed to throw the ball from so uh, Eddie you officially came last not second last and Thailand was third. Now then Eddie has also bought and left behind his um, his, t -shirt, his dirty t-shirt expects Toon to wash it. I said wash it love it's quite a nice t-shirt I'll wear that but he's also left his scene net. Uh, if you've ever been on Eddie's channel, uh, one of the videos he did was where he uh, collected all the tilapia. Well, he didn't get in there, but uh, some people did. Uh, with a big scene net, and they walked it all the way down the pond, taking all his uh, tilapia out. So um, he's left that here, so we've got no excuse now. We're going to have to drain the fence pond and get our big catfish out and stock the lake with it. So uh, that video is in queue. We haven't done it yet but we will be doing it soon. As is um, our catching the wild fish out of our quicksand pond. The water is receding very very quickly now. Uh, we were hoping to do it on the 15th of December to make it exactly one year from, la from last year when we did it. Uh, but it's still a little bit deep and that, um, that king cobra, well, what we think was a king cobra, did actually enter that uh, that that little area there uh, we don't know whether it went the other side or not so I'd like to get it fairly dry before I get in there with all the hyacinth and clean that out and uh, then catch the fish so that is that is in queue uh, and it will be done we're looking forward to doing that so there's a lot of yin and yang news for you today uh, we had some bad news as well one of our dear friends is very very ill so our thoughts go out to him just in case he's watching this you're in our hearts and in our thoughts, mate. So uh, chin up, and we'll be over to annoy you um, soon as soon as you let us. Uh, we've also had a kind gent uh, send us a few baht to sponsor a video. Now, we did actually go out on a little fishing trip, but it was terrible, guy. We caught a, t a couple of little tiny catfish, so that wouldn't do the guy any justice. What we're going to do, we're going to keep hold of the dosh, until Toon's family arrives. So we've got Toon's younger sister and husband turning up uh, just after Christmas. Um, we've got Toon's younger brother turning up uh, day before New Year's Eve. So we're gonna, I think we're going to have a day out. We're going to get a couple of guys, a couple of guys to just um, probably work half a day or something and we're going to go out and have a lovely family day with that. Um, we will record it of course um, I don't know where we'll go yet. It might be on the river. It might be uh, the local national park where they've got a lovely waterfall. I don't know if there's... We'll have to check, see if there's any water there. Uh, otherwise, it'll be a pretty crap video. But we will be making use of that gentleman's kind kind donation. The kindness certainly doesn't end there, guys. We've had, we've had one, one viewer um, send us the funds to purchase a new uh, GoPro camera. Uh, we're still using the old one. <laughs> it is in a right old state. The only reason we haven't started using the new one is because it's fractionally bigger than the uh, the Hero 5 that I'm currently holding. Uh, and our attachments um, are too small for it. So although we've got the camera ready and it's all charged up and I've got my head around how to use it, I'd have to go around holding it like that. So um, Toon's now ordered a, a selfie stick off uh, Lazada. Once we get that, we're then going to start using that and uh, apparently the stabilization is great so I wouldn't be shaking it all the time like this so it's just it's just brilliant you know after a, a, a few weeks we were really challenging with the goats we had a few deaths and um, you know with Jim and our friend not well you know to to get the yin and the yang is just um, it's just brilliant uh, oh by the way <laughs> Some of you might have noticed. <laughs> I just get a little bit of abuse. 
<laughs> about giving the caterpillars to the ducks. I, I wasn't expecting it. I, was, I said it jovial, uh, just as a jovial comment in the video. Uh, whatever. I didn't know that they were uh, poisonous to ducks. The ducks. Oh no, we, three ducks have died since then, uh, but we ate them well. It was only because we had duck on the menu when Eddie and Alan were here. Uh, they tasted all right. So yeah, apologies <laughs> for murdering a rare moth caterpillar. Uh, honestly, I, I, I'm totally sincere about that. Um, but we will be continuing to uh, squash them. There's bloody thousands here. So uh, in the countries that they are rare, uh, perhaps push the message there that they shouldn't be uh, killing those things. But there's so much for them to nosh on here, um, you know, I can't see an issue. Won't be giving anything to our poultry, won't be giving any of those to our poultry anymore, just in case. Uh, but they seem fine. Apparently it's a slow toxin. How, how slow is it? A year? Well, that will be inside us before then anyway. But anyway, don't, I don't want to rile anyone anymore. <laughs> There's enough in it, but it's a Saturday. I couldn't, I couldn't help a little tease there. Thanks to Alan, the visitors. I now know that these are desert flowers. I've always wanted to know, uh, but always forgotten to ask someone. The spoon is taking care of my uh, mulch. What a fantastic dog. So busy. Our chilies are drying very well. All these are off a wild chilli plant that was, uh, I think, well, say wild, I think Dad, Toon's dad planted it. That shows you how long ago that was, um, and there's probably just as many on there now. We have been growing some big chilies, so I'm busy drying those out. And uh, the ones that, well, I call them devil's fingernails, these are incredibly hot, these ones. I don't know what these ones are called, uh, but we've put a few aside of those. We're we'll drying those, so anyone that comes and has a somtam. Sorry, Alan, you didn't get your somtam, did you? We're a little bit busy, mate. Thank goodness the birds haven't been nibbling them. Hiding under... Eddie's seen that. I've still got three big bags of corn to sort out. But you can see what we've been getting, guys. And there's still loads out there. Whole cobs. I haven't just cherry-picked the best one. Bloody, bloody loads in there. So uh, we went out a few days ago and got another couple of bags. Yesterday it was quite good because Kai Mup helped me do a few. It's not a little bucket, it's a biggie. But nothing wrong with that corn at all. The ducks and the goats love it. I've got a busy day, and I? Waste not, want not, and uh, something for nothing. You can't beat it, can you? I'll be honest, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit giddy. Still haven't had anything to eat. And uh, too terrible, miss. Terrible. I've got no food in the house, so. Uh, while she's left me to go to the market, uh, I'm surviving on coffee all morning. So, uh, it's all right, but I feel a little bit up and down. So hopefully she's not going to be too much longer. She's only been gone about an hour now, so probably another three hours to go, and then I can have something to eat. All right, Wamsy. All right, my dear. Your sister's gone today, isn't she? She's on the island. She's getting loved up by Bullseye. We couldn't put Wamsy out there yet. He'd bloody destroy her. She's still too small. Don't you dare eat them, naughty sprout. All right, my dear. Uh, plans for the rest of the day? Absolutely no idea. Um, eating well would be a bonus. Uh, tonight we're going to have fish. I do believe we're having a mackerel. So uh, we, we do eat quite a lot of fish, but normally it's the freshwater fish out the, out the ponds. Uh, another video coming up. We are going to do a, a, a catch, clean and cook for our crayfish. I know a lot of you eagle-eyed viewers have been putting comments, ah, your bloody crayfish tank's empty, you bloody given up. We haven't given up. Um, it's just that at the moment, uh, that, well, last night it was 14 degrees, and then it's supposed to be dropping to 13 as well for a few nights on the bounce. Whether it's gonna get colder than that, it's a possibility, I suppose. Uh, so the, the crayfish sexy time has slowed right, right down. There, we've still got the sexy tank, with the uh, crayfish cougars and the young stud in there. Um, but it, they're not breeding as quite as uh, often as before. So at the moment, all our crayfish, other than those, so every crayfish apart from about 
11 I think it is or 12 they're all in the first grow out pond uh, and they look pretty big so uh, we're going to get some out we're going to use our lobster trap that I bought from the UK uh, we're going to put some fish heads in there or something put it in for a few hours and then um, depending on what we get out what what size and what sex and if they if they got berries or not keep the biggest boys and uh, we're going to cook them. Not sure how yet, whether they're going to go straight on a barbie or or boil or steam them, not sure, but um, yeah, I think they're going to be really good. We're going to purge them for 24 hours with salt water as well. That's what the Australians do with their yabbies. Um, but hopefully it'll be a good feed. So from Wansey and Blackhead, I bid you a fun farewell this Saturday. Take care. Oh, by the way, Liverpool, top of the lead. Can't be bad, can it? <laughs>